Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and we've got another episode of Fix or Fail. Today's episode, we're looking at a Asus laptop, a slightly older one, uh, nearly 10 years old now. This is the Asus P550L. It's a dual core processor, four threads, four gigs of RAM, running Windows 10. What could go wrong? Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so in today's video, we've been tasked with trying to uh, breathe a little bit more life into this laptop. So this is an Asus P550L. This is running an Intel i5 processor, dual core, four threads, maximum speeds around about 2.7 gigahertz, currently installed with four gigabytes of RAM, which is actually soldered to the motherboard. So hopefully we're gonna have a spare slot available for a RAM upgrade. It's got some spinning rust disc in there, which is uh, probably gonna be over Seagate or Western Digital a 500 gig model, so we will likely be replacing that with an SSD. At the moment, just by taking a quick look at it, gone through all the usual stuff, make sure that it actually physically works, see if it's actually worth upgrading. Currently, the main problems are obviously RAM, four gigs of RAM for Windows 10 is just not enough. It needs to be at least eight, if not 12 or 16, if you can possibly muster it. And when it comes to disk drives, running Windows on a hard disk drive, mechanical drive, rather than a solid state drive these days, is painfully slow. Now actually, in testing already, I have done some very crude benchmarks on this to see what the boot up times are like. At the moment in its current configuration, the fastest I managed to get into Windows from pressing the power button was just somewhere slightly under a minute and a half. Uh, then getting from the password screen to the actual desktop and opening a program, we're looking at the best part of about four to five minutes in total. This thing is severely restricted by the speed of the hard disk drive, and again, having only four gigs of RAM is never a good idea. So I've priced up the uh, upgrades on this. We're looking at somewhere, I think it's about 15 pounds for an eight gig stick of RAM, which is yeah, pretty good, and looking at about 25, 30 pounds for an SSD. So some of the reason, about 50 pounds all in to get this thing, hopefully, a little bit quicker. It's one of those things where it's actually a, a reasonable working laptop, and in order to kind of replace it for something else modern with a similar sort of um, kind of aspect ratios and usability and all that kind of stuff, realistically, you're going to be looking at spending about three to four hundred pounds on a brand new one. This you can buy secondhand on the market for somewhere between 100 150 pounds. So, spending an additional 50 pounds on it to kind of bring it up to a slightly more working or a more usable thing is. Uh, I think personally is the way to go. I've actually messaged the person and said, look, these are the options. This is what it's gonna cost you. I'm not gonna charge you for any labor or anything, just for the strictly for the parts. Uh, what do you wanna do? And they come back saying, well, what do you think? And I've basically just said exactly what I've said then. The sake of 50 pounds to get this thing just a little bit nippier and get a, a, maybe a year or so's more life out of it, I think is a pretty decent investment rather than plumping for a brand new model at the moment. So with that said, let's get this thing turned off. First thing we're gonna do is uh, take a look at the RAM situation and the hard drive situation, see what's actually installed and see what we can do. I have got parts ready on hand, so I've ordered those, they've arrived. So if we can upgrade them straight away, we will do and uh, clone the drives and all that kind of good stuff. Although having said that, before I do all that, I'm gonna have to check the drive because the drive that we're gonna be putting in here is a 480 gig version, the SSD, whereas this is a 500 gigabyte drive. So in terms of using my cloning software, or actually my cloning hardware, if the drive appears to be bigger than it actually, the drive is going to, it won't work. So I need to basically clear up a little bit of space and potentially remove a partition. These ASUS drives, generally they always split them in half for some reason. So they have half is the drive C, which is your operating system and programs. Then they have this random extra D drive, which is data. So in theory, they're expecting people to put all their data on the data drive and all the other stuff on the Windows drive. That never happens. Generally, the data drive always stays empty. And in this particular instance, that is exactly the case. So we're probably just gonna remove the data drive for now so it thinks it's kind of like about 250 gigs, which should remedy those problems. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. When we come back, we'll take a look inside and see what's going on. Okay, so now we can take a look and see what's going on under the hood, so to speak. Now, these are actually really simple to work on, at least in terms of the kind of obvious upgrades, such as the hard drive, which is in this section here, and the RAM, which is somewhere under here. Literally two screws, so just a uh, little cross-headed screwdriver. I think this is a PH1 head. It's a long screw. And there we go, 
there's our two screws removed so this panel just pulls towards you and that is essentially it so you can lift that up and then you've got access to pretty much most of the internal stuff that would be upgradable things like the uh, cooling system etc is a little bit more deeper depth so we can take a look at that should we need to it doesn't appear to be overheating at the moment but after we've done our tests after we've done the upgrades we'll see what the deal is see if it needs cleaning out so over here we've got the memory card reader so sd card slot here is our uh, memory channel there's only a single channel here the rest of the ram is actually soldered on which you can just about see there so four gigs soldered on so you can only put in a maximum of another eight gig stick in here uh, making 12 gigs the maximum this chipset actually supported for this intel processor is 16 gigs so depending on what is soldered on already you cannot go over that uh, the hard drive is located here so again that's going to be just a couple of screws so we can actually just unscrew that i'm glad to see there is actually a hard disk drive in there if there was an ssd in here and it was still that slow i think it would be uh, pretty much game over but this is absolutely fine so we can slide that across and pull this one out and there we go so there is a western digital blue 500 gig so yeah that should be nice and easy to replace so just make a kind of mental note of which way or the orientation of the actual caddy so it is going that way up so when it goes back in you know exactly where you are in terms of ram this is going to be really easy to do so i've actually got my spares over here so i've got a nice little knee tack drive that's going to be uh nice and simple to do hopefully Although we probably will be using our Oracle cloning station to uh, transfer the data over just so I can leave it, get on with this thing. The thing is with this, if you're trying to clone the drives actually using the system itself, because it's so slow, obviously the data transfer is going to be very slow as well. So you're better off taking the drive out and actually cloning it externally or using a PC and some software like Macrium, etc. That's another way of doing it. Although for me personally, the cloning system, just plop the drives in, press the button and go off, do whatever you need to do, come back when it's done. Anyway, with that said, this is our RAM. So this is from TimeTech. This is eight gigs. I'm not too sure what the actual RAM on the actual chip is, but this is DDR3-1600. And very easy to do. So there's a little notch there. All you do is line up the notch, put it in in a slight angle, like we do with M.2 drives. A little wiggle to make sure it's fully seated. Then push it down with both fingers, clicks into place. Brilliant, job done. So that's the RAM upgraded. We now need to clone the drive. So I'm gonna get that set up, put it into our cloning station, and we'll come back when it's done and put it back in the unit. Right, so we're back and the drive has been cloned. Uh, clone station's done its thing. So we've got our little NETAC drive in here. So now we can put this back into the unit. I've only used one screw to secure it. It's an SSD, they don't really need a great deal of securing. And also some of the screws get in the way when you're trying to put this thing back in. So that is slid into place. We've got three little screws to put back into the hard drive caddy. I'm actually pretty excited to see how well this does. I would imagine, well, all things being equal, previously it took about a minute and a half just to get to the login screen and then about an additional two minutes or so for it to actually become somewhat usable. So we'll see how we do in regards to those particular speeds. Hopefully it will be uh, considerably better. I would expect it to be, well, hopefully a third or at least half. That would be uh, preferable. So everything's done here. So we can put this back together, stick in this plastic panel. There is actually like a little plastic wedge. There we go, that clicked into place nicely. So grab our two long screws and put those back in. This is one of those units which is actually really easy to work on as long as you don't need to get sort of too in depth but for these simple upgrades absolutely fine so that is effectively it so let's flip this back over and we'll put in the, uh, the power again and open up the screen now what i'm going to do is i don't want to show you the screen obviously because of uh, data protection all that kind of stuff so let's reset this i've got my timer actually on my phone here so I'm going to press the power button and the start button at the same time to see what the first time boot up speeds are like. And immediately there's no whirring noise, which is uh, always good. And actually, let me uh, put that down a little bit so it's not coming out on the overhead screen either. Wow. 
So there is the uh, the boot up sign. There is the login screen. So that is, uh, well, you can see, that is 18 seconds, basically. If I round that up a little bit, it's 18 seconds. So we've gone from almost, yeah, that's, I can't even work out in my head how fast that is. That's impressive. So I'm gonna put the uh, the password in now. And it's gone straight to the desktop. So I might as well stop this, this is pointless. Pre previously you'd put the password in and it would just be waiting, waiting, waiting. So yeah, it's basically gone straight into the desktop and I'm guessing it's gonna be uh, usable. It does appear to be. So yeah, open up File Explorer and immediately things are opening up which you can't really see on the screen, which is a good thing because this is obviously confidential information, etc. Well, it's not, but it, it kind of potentially could be. So yeah, that's running absolutely fine. So let me fire something on the screen now. I'm gonna get the uh, task manager because we'll see if the uh, actual usage for the SSD is better. And we'll also put in here the hardware monitor just to see if there's anything uh, overheating or anything, which I don't think there will be. That's impressive. You double click it and the program just opens. It's actually really nice and snappy. Right, so hopefully you can see some of the screen possibly, but I'll describe what I can see. So uh, disk activity currently is basically zero, which is great because previously it was almost pegged at 100% all the time. So that is great. So it means disk access IO is gonna be absolutely great. And our CPU as well, we're down to like 4%, so 5%. So the system is under kind of, well, it's in this best possible configuration. It's got potential to do things. So if you want to open up an application or anything, it's going to do it very quickly. You're not going to have to wait for the disk to spool up or any of that kind of nonsense. It's just ready and it's responsive. So I'm, uh, yeah, I'm very pleased. It's working very well. We'll do some other benchmarks and stuff and test to see if any thermal paste needs changing. But realistically, our CPU package temperature at the moment is about 38C in a 25 degree room. So 13 degrees over ambient. I think that is absolutely fine. Don't see any real need to take this apart any further. I think that is going to be, uh, yeah, I think this is going to be chalked up as an absolute win. For the sake of like £15 for some RAM, I think it's £15. Or if that's wrong, I'll put links in the video description so you can check it all out anyway. But yeah, about £15 for RAM, about £25-£30 for an SSD made an absolutely stunning difference in terms of the actual usability and even just being able to actually move things around on the desktop is just yeah absolutely incredible. So definitely well worth doing. I'm very pleased to say this has been chalked up as a definite fix. So let me know what you think about this video in the comments section. Have you tried upgrading an older laptop with the hard disk drive and putting an SSD in there? Has the difference been something absolutely tangible that you've uh, appreciated and has extended the life of a otherwise kind of ready for the dustbin laptop? Let me know. I'll be interested to hear your comments. I think, anyway, that's going to wrap things up. I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.